the show is two shows, but it's one show. It's two person actually. Uh, two Korean artists who belong to the first generation of modernist, Korean modernist artists. They both uh, born at the beginning of the last century. One is still alive, Han Mook, where we're in the show we are. He's born in 1914, so he's over 100 years old. And the other one was born in 1904, I guess. Uh, 1904. And he died in uh, 1989. The, both of them moved to Paris, settled to Paris in the late 50s, early 60s. So they are f Korean and French in some way because they, they've been living and Han Mook is still living in Paris. So that's the, also the, the explanation of why we choose these two artists. And um, it's also important because they have they are the, the first generation of modernist artists. And they, uh, when they arrived to Paris, Paris was the, the idea of the, uh, the city of the art. But also they knew what was going on in Paris in the 50s, the informal art. And so they, they didn't move without any reason. It's not only a romantic reason. Yes, but um, at the time, the mostly the, about the international situation, their information was given through the, uh, Japan. So they're well informed about informel, and they uh, receive much information through the book. But they always have a big desire, really, uh, to come to Paris and really explore and then experience directly. So Han Mook uh, came to Paris in uh, 1961 and uh, Yung Mo came to Paris in um, 1960s. He came for, uh, to Paris in um, 59. Uh, however, he just visited and then he went to uh, Germany and he did a traveling show for one year in Germany and came to Paris 60s and settled. Consortium has also an ongoing history with Korea. We uh, showed many Korean artists already. We did the uh, commission, we did the uh, uh, public art. We, uh, so the story with Korea is already long. We, uh, we hired Sundak in year 2000. Uh, and uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs used to have every year two seasons which is a series of cultural manifestation between France and another country. So this year, next year, it's France and Korea. So it's also another framework that's more administrative and uh, cultural diplomacy type. But so it was also interesting to locate this show within this season, let's say. And uh, so we select these two person and, and especially Han Mook, because his career, he started in, uh, uh, in Korea, he studied in, in Japan, he moved to France, but his, uh, his work is, he tried many things, and you see in the show, and especially in the first room, where there's a bunch of drawings and small paintings that never been shown, and nobody knows before we, we discover this, series of work. So it showed how he tried different uh, manner, different way of doing paintings until the quite late, the late uh, 80s, uh, 90s, when he was offered a big studio and he could at the time uh, realize a series large painting. The, the one you, you see behind us, three by two or two by two large painting. And uh, at the time, he was already almost 80 years old. Yes. Um, the painting, eight paintings that you're seeing uh, behind us is uh, since, uh, Fra as Frank mentioned, uh, 18, uh, 1989, because he, had, um, he was given a large studio, so that was the first time he started um, the painting a large scale. But um, one of the turning point when he started this um, um, spiral uh, geometric abstract painting, it was actually started 
uh, from um, late 60s, as you will see in the drawings, and the uh, early 70s. The, what was the turning point was in 1969 when the Apollo went to a moon. It was a big shock for him. So for him, it was a big, um, the, um, big issue how I can express the space with a time. It's almost like a fourth dimensional uh, issue. So from 69 on, you will see he's using compass um, to create these geometrical uh, abstract paintings. Uh, the main room of the show is focusing on this series of paintings because they are quite, they are large and they, uh, the repetition of this motif, it's a kind of cosmogonic painting. Even if when you look at this painting and if you know a bit of the European abstraction, there's uh, a continuity with uh, Kupka, for instance. Uh, he was not an ignorant in the history of art. When he was in Korea, he was a critic, art critic. So he knew everything, and, but he turned into his own, his own way. And the drawings, drawings are always interesting for a painter uh, because it's a, it's a way, it's light, you can do it very quickly. So it's a way you can test many different manner. And in this case, it's very sensitive and very noticeable to see all the, tr the tried, the try he made. He tried uh, geometrical, more like square. He tried uh, informal, he tried more dynamic. But there is a, uh, something that is very constant in his work, is a kind of freedom, a kind of light, being quite light and free. He tried many things, he wanted to be free, that's why he came to Paris. When he leave, left Korea, he was already kind of established. He was a teacher at the university. He was a professor. He was a professor. Kids. And probably he had shows, but he wanted to, to leave everything and to start again. And it's uh, because Korea society, and probably even more at that time, is very uh, heavy society with uh, uh, social codes that are very strong, very heavy. So for an artist, and also the political change, because it was the beginning of the military uh, in 61. So for an artist, it was quite difficult. So he just wanted to escape and be free. And in Paris, he was free. He was poor, but free. But at the same time, what is interesting, um, when he came, he was already uh, over 40s. And um, so he always had this uh, the spirit for the new experimentation. But whenever people come to him, um, they often offered him uh, like a retrospective exhibition, but he always didn't want to have a retrospective exhibition because he always don't want to look back. He want to look forward. So as you will see in his career, he doesn't have many um, exhibition offered, uh, unlike like Yung No, who was quite, um, uh, was very much connected with the international art scene, but he was quite uh, isolated. But at the same time, he was really um, always uh, trying to invent new things going forward. So now we're in the second part of the show uh, that concern the second artist, Yung No, Yung No Li, uh, always thinking that in uh, uh, Asia, the family name came first and the first name came second. So Li is his first name, as Han Muk, Han is the first name, is the family name. So uh, Yung No is, a contemporary of Hans Hartung, the same, he born the same year, he died the same year, 1904-1989. All his career was more or less an abstract painter, even if at the end the figure was coming back. So he arrived in Paris late 50s, and to the contrary of Han Mook, he was really immediately, almost, part of the national and international scene. He's been picked up by uh, the French 
photographer and, and uh, gallerist, Paul Facchetti, who had a gallery in Paris and who was the first to exhibit Pollock in Europe. So, uh, Yung Ngo joined the gallery, so his work and his the first room starts with, in the 50s, very informal, but all along his career, all along his life, his technique and his uh, material were, were traditional, like rice paper, Korean rice paper, or Chinese ink, and things like this. So he's a, what we call transmodernist in some way that is mixing two cultures, two traditions. And, uh, and both traditions are valuable and uh, it's one plus one make three at least. But you know actually um, started uh, with a calligraphy. He's actually from a um, literati uh, family. And then when he was 18, uh, he left home uh, to make his career as an artist. And he went to Seoul and he made the, uh, his career all by himself. And, uh, but from the, uh, that time already, he was a part of uh, the artist circle. And um, what is interesting is uh, he's one of a few who use the um, oriental uh, calligraphic style and skill and using uh, with the Western um, abstract painting. And he also um, uh, taught calligraphy also in Paris uh, in a Cernucci uh, museum. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, brought this uh, tradition of calligraphy and at the same time he used this tradition to um, use as an abstract painting for his work. And in this way, that way the connection was easier with the international uh, field, because we can see in Pollock or Mark Tabby uh, some kind of expression that look a bit similar to calligraphy. I think it's a bit artificial to compare because it comes from two different zones, but some artists from the abstract expressionists has this temptation of Asian Orient. And uh, so the, he was close to Mark Tubby in some way, and there's similitude in his, uh, in his work with this uh, abstract expressionist. And uh, when you look at the painting, uh, also like we did with the Hanmuk drawing, we put together without chronological order. So in this room you have uh, paintings from the, six, from the 50s and paintings from the 70s all together. And, but if you look from one painting to another, you see how from uh, an undifferential uh, field, the motifs are coming out of the, of the, of the ground. And uh, from informal, it comes to something like figure. Uh, behind us, there is a, a screen, painted screen, which is also totally related to uh, Asian tradition of painted uh, folding screen. But you see in the, in the motif, you see something that uh, appear and jump out of the, the ground. And uh, so for, from totally informal to uh, some kind of figurative in some way because you can see some figure in mixed with abstract pattern. Uh, what we said is really Korean paper, uh, Chinese ink was really at the service of modern uh, position. The, the Korean paper is a thin paper. It's used for many different ways, like in Japan also. You can use it as a wallpaper, so you cover the walls with this. It's a thin, but you can glue on different layers. So when you use it uh, on the canvas and you use uh, ink, so there is like a, a different layer of uh, colors that are going deep into the, the, the material. So it gives a blur aspect uh, of the painting, in the painting. Uh, all the, the works are coming from the, the, the estate studio. His widow is still alive, his son is there. And uh, so they kept a lot of works. And most, uh, all these works are coming from them. And many of those works were never exhibited. 
And we found when we went there several times, uh, some pieces that very weird in some way. For instance, on the wall here, you have a, uh, this green and dark blue painting. It's painted over a piece of styrofoam, like a stupid piece of styrofoam that is very fragile. So we saw it in the studio and uh, it's, not, it's not like a test, it's a real work, but it was never exhibited. We, we found two of them and we saved them and uh, protect them with a frame. So it shows also that this guy was totally into painting all the time. So he was using any material he can have and uh, like a cloth also, a fabric, and, and also we're showing a few little sculpture. And uh, Iuno was really a very uh, prolific uh, artist, so he uh, produced many kinds, all kinds of work with all kinds of different material. He was very much exposed internationally and he had a much uh, uh, relationship with the international artist. And then, um, Around 67, there was a big uh, political uh, turmoil uh, with the CIA sending um, uh, arrest to a lot of intellectual who lives in Europe. So there was, they, they pretend there's a cons conspiracy of intellectual against the military dictatorship that was at the time. And uh, Jung No has been asked to come to Korea for an exhibition. And it was a it was a trap. No, he was even before was his work was banned to expose uh -huh. in Korea, and then uh, they said, "Ah, oh, now okay, now we will uh, uh, give you a chance to expose something exhibition." But when he arrived, it was a CIA, a KCIA, yeah, a K Korean CIA, uh, arrest uh, him, and he was prisoned from uh, 67 until 69. But before he was released, he was sentenced to death. And there was an international support committee who said, you cannot, he's, a, he's innocent, he's not a spy. Because he was accused to spy, of course, for North Korea, which is totally crazy. So, but he stayed, as soon as I said, two years in jail. But when he was prisoned, the most difficulty, not only being in prison, but he was not able to produce the work. So we have um, uh, the series of work that he uh, secretly um, produced uh, during when he was imprisoned. He used uh, some rice and soy sauce and uh, using uh, uh, the minable wooden uh, material. A fan or so. When they give uh, this uh, rice in the box, he saved all this and he produced uh, works. So it's quite a big amount of um, uh, work also exists during that time. So his relationship was not so easy with his country. And that's the first generation of modernists, they had trouble with the authority, which was not the case of the, the following generation, who were also in the abstraction, but I don't know, it was more uh, accepted in some way. But the first people who did this were totally uh, uh, banned and at, uh, couldn't expose in Korea. But in my opinion, it's not just for the uh, question of ideology, it's more like um, he was uh, uh, more for the reunification and against the dictatorship. So it's more like humanitarian um, resistance. Um, if uh, you will also see those um, the the big painting on crowd, uh, this um, I think he did um, right after um, uprising in Gwangju massacre in 1980. Um, so when people say this look like a manifestation uh, for the for the uprising, and some Western people say it looked like a manifestation of a student for anti-nuclear war. And I think the spirit is all there, not specifically any subject matter.